Hello everyone, this is a Rummy Bear 22 review, and today I am bringing you something really awesome, and I'm really excited to show you guys. This is the LEGO Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters, um, exclusively from the LEGO store. And as you can tell, um, I have it on my bed here, because it's so freaking huge, and I'm sorry about my trailer trash mattress, by the way, but uh, my sheets are in the wash, so yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I have prepared the greatest spot to review this. Um, well, not the set, but the box anyway. Anyway, let's just get into this. So, um, yes, this is uh, one of the biggest sets I own. Uh, it comes with 4,634 pieces. Um, the guy at the Lego store said that this was the biggest uh, Lego set that they have there, at least on hand at the time. Um, and it comes with, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 minifigures? Yeah, 12 minifigures, that's crazy. Sorry, I can't do simple edition because I'm an idiot. So here on the box here, it says ages 16 and up. It is set 75827. And again, 4,634 pieces. I already mentioned that. Now, there's a few alterations to, uh, I guess, the minifigures, which I'll get into later, as this is now a officially licensed Lego set. This isn't from the Kuso Ideas. Uh, if you remember from my Ghostbusters Ecto-1 Lego review, that was from the Ideas line. But this is an actual licensed set. I guess because the new Ghostbusters or new Ghostbusters movie is coming out in a few months, I guess they just chose to release this. But it is awesome, and I'm glad they did. Um, so, yeah, about 12 minifigures on the side here. We have a few shots of how the firehouse opens up. So, yes. Uh, on the back here, we have a much larger image of what the inside of the firehouse looks like. We have a bunch of quotes from the show, uh, iconic reenactment scenes that you can uh, pose inside the set. So everything from all three movies uh, is referenced in this set, so that's pretty cool. Or all two movies, three, what, third one. Eh. And we got some more stuff up here in various languages. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's who you're gonna call as it's, I think, I, I don't know, I can't read any of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, and we have uh, another shot here of some of the extra minifigures, or I guess the ghosts, or the ghouls, or the possessed, um, Diana, or Dana. Uh, that was her name, I believe. Uh, and we also have a few images here of the minifigures. We got Venkman there pulling up from the back. We got Winston right there. We have Spangler, and we have Stance. And of course we have Slimer, two nameless ghosts, the library ghost from the first movie, and the zombie cabman, I believe, who is from the second. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that is the box, a big box. So why don't we get to the actual set itself? All right, so first let's take a look at the minifigures because there is a lot of them. Starting at the back here, we have possessed Dana Barrett right here, so she looks really cool. They uh, gave her this little makeshift toga here that she wore in the movie, and they actually colored her feet um, without any shoes or whatever, because she was barefoot, I believe, in this costume. So that's actually pretty cool how they're actually painting um, the legs more accurately, I guess, now with uh, the Lego sets, or maybe it's just the collector's editions or something, I don't know. So uh, these figures do come with alternative headpieces, so let's take a look at her alternative headpiece. So here we have her red demon eyes there, looking a little bit more menacing. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, next we have Lewis Tunningly, if you'll zoom in, please. And uh, so right there, there's his normal face. And I do like how they actually gave him the uh, a an accurate facial expression. Come on. There we go. An accurate facial expression to the one in the movie. He always did that little, like, weird little smile or that awkward smile, so that's pretty cool. Uh, since this is uh, post-possessed Lewis, he's, his uh, hair here is a little bit um, messy and his shirt's all scruffy and dirty. Um, so he comes with a alternative demon face as well. And there is Evil Lewis. Next we have the creepy library ghost lady. So right here we have her um, monster face. And of course, if he uh, comes with an alternative hair piece as well for the normal librarian face. And of course, here we have the Ghostbusters themselves, um, come with a whole plethora of equipment here. So as we can see here, Stance comes with a ghost trap, as well as Winston. 
Uh, almost everybody here comes with a walkie-talkie, I believe. Um, uh, Vankman, yeah, just comes with a walkie-talkie. Spangler comes with a walkie-talkie. And his little ghost radar, which he uses a lot in the movies. Um, also, I will point out that the uh, uh, these figures are slightly different from the original Ecto-1 figures. And uh, with that said, they have added... Um, like illustrations here or little uh, graphics of uh, arm patches and stuff that uh, you, we didn't have on the Ecto-1 figure. So as you can see here, there's actually um, the Ghostbusters badges on their shoulders and added patchwork here on their sh uh, elbows. And uh, I believe Vankman, no, uh, Spangler and Ray, basically uh, their model pieces are the same. But Venkman and Winston come with new hair pieces. So, uh, as you can see here, Venkman has a bit more of a receding hairline here around the top. And Winston actually has a bit more of a curly hairstyle. Um, so, yeah. Also, this Venkman comes with his slime-covered coat. Um, from that famous scene where he gets slimed by Slimer. And here we have the alternative face pieces. So, everyone here seems to have a scared look on their face, minus Venkman. He's got that disgusting slime-covered face there after he gets slimed by Slimer, of course. And let's take a look behind the figures. So here we have the iconic Proton packs from the movie, and they look pretty much exactly the same as the one from the Ecto-1 set. They're pretty much exactly the same. Um, but if we want to take a closer look, there is a lot of detail put into these, even on the backside that rarely sees the light of day, as you can see here, there's a bit like a little vent thing here at the back. So yeah, that looks really awesome. And lastly, we have the ghosts. Nothing too special about them, besides the clear printing and the interesting design. Uh, you can put clear headpieces in here at the bottom here to support them on little pegs, which I'll show off later. Um, but here we have the last two minifigures in the set. So we have Gene, and we have the zombie cab driver. I believe he's the cab driver, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, again, with their alternative face pieces. So here we have a worried look on Gene, and we just have a normal back head printing here on the zombie. So looking inside the set here, we got a lot of rooms and a lot of different little goodies in here. All from the both, or all from two movies. So starting, I guess we'll start with the boring side first. Um, here we basically just have a staircase to each room. So as you can see here, you got two doors, two balconies, and two or three flights of stairs if you count the basement here. Down here is the ghost containment chamber where they load in the ghosts. So it does come down like so, where you can put the trap in. And you got the two little lights there to let you know when it's, or that uh, would let them know if the ghost was, you know, in or out, you know. It's okay to pull out the trap, that kind of thing, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I'm wasting time. Um, so down here on the main floor, we have the desks. We have Gene's desk right here, and we have Vankman's desk. I believe that's Vankman's desk. Or desk. And it came off here, so it's a little... Uh, a little uh, I scrubbed out a little bit there. We also have... Um, I believe this is just a toolbox with multiple drawers. Just like that, they can come out all the way, obviously, but, you know, without me pulling this thing out because it's really hard to get my fingers in here, that's what she said. Uh, I can't really pull those out uh, too well. And so, yes, there's all these little added goodies, newspapers. Uh, we got, I believe this is just a little lamp, telephone, a computer. Uh, again, we got more toolboxes over here. Now, the guy at the Lego store told me that you can actually put the Ecto-1 car inside here, but you have to move some stuff around. But I found out that the only way you can really get this in here is if you move out the desk. And to me, that eh, that's uh, kind of annoying. But uh, I, I thought it would just actually fit in there, but I guess not. Um, again, we have like these little extra little touches that you really wouldn't see in Lego set. We got like boxes, half open boxes and stuff. Newspapers lying on the ground. I believe this is a lamp of some kind right there. Um, I didn't show you, but there is a back panel piece here with various notes and clippings from the, or uh, I guess from the movie or whatever, just where they keep up all their random stuff. we got another door in the back that, of course, opens and closes. I'm going to have to go around here to close it. 
And come on, there we go. And we got a little fire bell, of course, the iconic fire bell. I don't really know if it was iconic or not. And we have little nice ceiling lights here. Just a nice little touch. Everything here has a nice touch. It really looks like a legit building. They didn't really miss out on anything. Okay, so here on the second floor, we have what appears to be the living quarters. We got a kitchen. We have, again, a some shelves around here with various bottles, cereal, cans, or beer, or Coke, or whatever. It's probably Coke if this is Lego. Um, we also have a pizza box back there. We have an oven. We have a little cup. And, again, these little drawers that open up. Again, those all open. But uh, I can't really reach my fingers in there and, you know keep myself from blocking out the camera so yeah we also have a table here with cup with with a cup and we also have some slime uh pink slime from the second movie on the table as well as the toaster which they make or make a dance with the slime yeah 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 we also have another box back there we have a i don't know what that is, is that like a, a furnace or something i don't really know and we also have a little arcade machine surprisingly and again, another door, which opens up like so. And that leads directly into the bedroom. So I can't really get my camera in here uh, too well, but uh, all there is is just three beds, and that's about it, and a lamp in the back. All right, moving on to the top floor. We have the, I guess, the main research area, or e Egon Station, I guess, as it were. And you can pretty much tell that because there's all this science momo jumbo here on all these shelves. There's different um, devices here, beakers and all that fun stuff. A computer, uh, which I believe, if you look on it, it actually says, if I can... Yeah, Vigo the P Carpathian, which was, again, from the second movie. Um, we have a, a little electronic board, which I do remember from the movie. I think I remember seeing that. Uh, we also have a boombox, and we have another TV here with Go or not Go Zool, uh, which was the demon that possessed uh, Lewis, which Egon was able to read using um, this little headpiece, which also I forgot to mention with the minifigures comes with a alternative Lewis headpiece um, from the part of the movie where Egon is researching him or studying him, and he discovers that he is possessed by this demon dog thing. And again, more cardboard boxes here, or uh, half open boxes and we have another lamp we have a dart board with a dart stuck in the wall uh, I guess that's a scoreboard and we have um, I guess that's a newspaper or something a map of the city a billiard table as well as two billiard sticks there that stick into the wall again more lights I didn't mention up here too but there's also lights on the second floor but you probably would have already known that or knew that <clears throat> so yeah um and again, we have windows here on the sides, so you can they can yeah you know, look out or whatever. I guess I don't know. Uh, also, sorry if I'm using the uh, the, the uh, camera light here, but it is just it's too dark to get this thing lit up too well. Um, and what else do we have on the side here? We have the photo developing room again from the second movie. A lot of the scenes are from the second movie, but uh, I guess because they spend more time actually exploring the. Um, the firehouse in the second movie. But yes, we have, again, a uh, photo development room. We have the pictures of Vigo, the Carpathian, uh, which, if you remember from the movie, they magically caught fire with uh, Ray and Egon still stuck inside, which Winston had to break in and save them. And speaking of which, we have the fire hydrant that Winston used to do so as he cracked open the door right here and allowed him to get in and rescue them. We also have a camera, a magnifying glass, a little flame here on a photo. I believe that's supposed to be a photo that caught fire. And this little thing, which I believe is, yeah, just a pick to pick up the pictures. So all these little added details. Uh, we also have a bathroom and slime leaking out of the toilet. At least I hope that's slime. Uh, we have a sink right there and a bar of soap and a little mirror with a little fuck reflective uh, sticker piece right there. We also have some more uh, bathroom stuff there. A shower right there. And yeah. And here we have the famous fire pole. 
uh, that goes right down. And of course, how that works is that this little piece basically just falls down like that and spins around. Uh, we also have their uh, the Ghostbusters uh, cabinets where they keep all their stuff. So we got Spangler, Stance, and Vinkman. Now, I believe this was sort of modeled after the first movie because in the first one, Winston didn't show up until later in the movie or he didn't join the Ghostbusters until later. So right now, we basically have um, the main three who started the Ghostbusters business. Um, but this is where you can keep their proton packs and stuff and all their gear. And it does work. There's like a little space in here where you can keep their proton packs. So that's really cool. Again, more windows. And yeah. Now let's just take a look at the outside of the firehouse and in a hole. So here is the full house uh, on the outside. And it's pretty much a full-scale replica of the firehouse from the movie. It looks exactly like it. Everything is here. The little designs on the side of the building the little yellow peg things here at the bottom we also have the ghostbusters sign and we have the firehouse's original um address right there and we have little star things on the bottom there we also have a nice little sidewalk here which is mostly tile and a few nub pieces right there sticking out to attach minifigures and we also have a street light with a little garbage can Again, all of those little added details. I really do like the street light. It looks really cool. Um, we have more images, or I guess another shot of the windows here, and you can see some of the stuff on the inside. You can see a lot of the brickwork here. It looks really legit. Um, and again, here we have more cobblestone pieces here inside the walls to give it that really authentic looking feel. We got like a little vent in the windows here. And we also have a crack in the pavement with the evil slime or good slime depending on how you felt the mood slime from the second movie popping out of the sidewalk right there so that's really cool on the other side here we also have like little balconies and little ladders that go down the side of the um, building right here uh, this actually keeps the root or attaches to the roof while the rest of this attaches to the building and this is basically just where it opens up but it's locked in right now so I won't try to pry that open and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, there's uh, the set also comes with these little um, clear sticks here that you can uh, slap the ghosts on. So you can have them sort of like suspended in the air there. Uh, but yeah, oh, I didn't mention this. Wow, I keep, there's so much stuff. Uh, again, a little, I don't know what that is. I guess just a vent or uh, AC or heating unit here sitting on top of the... Um, house. I don't know really what you call those. I'm not a carpenter, so I wouldn't know. But yes, that's pretty much the Ghostbusters firehouse, and it is awesome. Um, I live in Canada, so this went for about $400. I know it's a little bit cheaper in the States, like it's only $350 or something like that, but here it's a little bit more pricey, so that kind of sucks, but it's still an awesome set nonetheless, and it's worth every penny, considering that I am a Ghostbusters fan, and I would do anything to have this. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'm sorry for the uh, <laughs> the way I'm reviewing it, but honestly, I can't. It's so big, I really can't fit it on my table there. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I know I love this like to death. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.